Some of the students here at the University of Hartford missed out on watching the Hartford Hawks game against the Niagara Purple Eagles as part of the ESPN College Basketball Tip-Off Marathon this morning. Okay, those students had class, so they had a pretty good reason. But for the students that made it here, as well as fans and members of the media, what a great game we had here as part of the tip-off marathon, the homestanding Hartford Hawks, with an overtime 82-78 victory over the Niagara Purple Eagles here at Chase Family Arena in Hartford, Connecticut. Hartford was in control for about... 30 minutes in this contest. As a matter of fact, they had a 14-point lead with 4 minutes and 37 seconds to go in regulation before the Purple Eagles closed out regulation strong. An 18-4 run to tie the game at 70. Niagara actually took the lead in the overtime, but two of the star guards for the Hartford Hawks were able to take over in the overtime. Jalen Ross had 35 points in the game, and he set up Jason Dunn, who had 20 points with the game-winning three-point shot with about 39 seconds to go to give Hartford a two-point lead at 80-78. to 78. Dunn hit two more free throws uh, to provide the final margin of victory at 82-78. to 78. And after the game, I got a chance to talk with Jalen Ross. Once again, 35 points and that one big assist in the overtime. And I asked him to begin our conversation. If he's not a morning person, will he be more of a morning person after a game like this, a game that started at 6.30 in the morning? Yeah, I mean, I don't really mind playing in the morning, but, you know, once you find out it's on ESPN and the game is a game, you got to get up and got to be ready to play. Uh, what a dramatic finish at the very end. Niagara comes back from 13 down, uh, ties the game. How did you recover in that overtime and then going down to the overtime to get the victory? Uh, we just wanted to stay even. You know, college basketball is a game of runs. And at some point we knew they were going to make a run. We just had to withstand it and stay calm and just know that we can pull it down in the stretch. Uh, for about 30 to 35 minutes, you were in control of this game. You had 18 points in the first half. What about your game today? Uh, really made it hard for Niagara to stop you. Uh, I was just playing my game and just trying to be aggressive. Uh, coach always tells me to be aggressive and just going with the plan. Uh, did your scoring early really set you up for all the free throws that you took, 13 or 14 from the line? I think so. I think if you when you score early on, it, it, it makes the defense be a little bit more aggressive on you. And then once we got into the bonus, um, they were trying to pressure up on me a little bit more and just go to the line. Uh, and in that overtime, you were down by one and then set up Jason Dunn uh, for that three-pointer, uh, his second three-pointer in that overtime. So that winning play, take me through that play. What did you see on that play? Uh, throughout the game, they had been hedging the ball screens really hard. And um, I just knew that if I can get the big man to jump out a little bit, it was, a, it was just a small gap that I can get through. And then once I got to the middle of the lane, I saw that he was open in the corner, out the corner of my eye. And... I had no doubt that he was going to knock it down because he's a knockdown shooter. Yeah. Uh, being the only senior listed uh, on the roster, how much of a responsibility do you have for this team and to this team being that you have that SR next to your name? Uh, I definitely have to be a leader, but I don't think I have to do everything. I, I have teammates that they're young, but we've been through a lot, like through last year, getting far in the playoffs. So they have experience, so it's not that I have to do everything. Everybody knows they have to be held accountable, but – Having teammates that have some experience, even though they're young, definitely makes my job easier. Uh, at the end of the game, Coach Gallagher uh, took the microphone and thanked the crowd uh, f and mentioned that they were the reason uh, that they won the game. How big was the crowd for you guys uh, this morning? Uh, it was huge because, I mean, coming into, into this game, we, we know that they were promoting to the students, but you didn't really know like how many people were actually going to show up. So once we were warming up and you saw people spilling in and filling the stands, you could feel the energy right away, and then once the ball was tipped, the energy was incredible, and we definitely fed off that to start the game off. Uh, what's next right now in the itinerary? On the itinerary, I got to go shower. I got to go do a project for my class at 5 and 7.30. I get out of class at 10, and then got to watch some film, get ready for the game tomorrow.
Best of luck in class. Right, thank you. As for the Niagara Purple Eagles, they fall to 0-3 on the season. A heartbreaking loss for Niagara. They were led by Matt Scott, 26 points, the Brooklyn native, but not enough for the Niagara Purple Eagles. Khalil Dukes, the transfer from USC, 11 points in the game, all in the second half or in overtime. So Hartford improving its record, its first win of the season. They're 1-1, one and, one, and they don't have a whole lot of time to celebrate this win. They play right here tomorrow against another team, from the MAC, the Bronx of Ryder University. So once again, our final score, 82-78, the win for the Hartford Hawks against the Niagara Purple Eagles. That's the story from Chase Family Arena in Hartford, Connecticut. My name is Adishin Nikoiki. Now over to the Bronx, Manhattan College and Winthrop. Here's Lauren Fodi. Hours 16 and 17 of the tip-off marathon belong to the Manhattan Jaspers and the Winthrop Eagles. The Jaspers played host to the Eagles on this rainy Tuesday morning, and yes, I said morning, but despite the Jaspers having home court advantage, the Eagles swooped in for the W, winning the game 94-81. to After the game, I spoke with Eagles senior guard, Keon Johnson, who finished the game with 22 points and 6 rebounds. Keon, first of all, congratulations on the win. Thank you, thank you. All right, so I have to ask you, when is the last time that you played at 8.45 in the morning? Um, I would have to say I would have to say AAU game, um, junior year actually. Junior year is my last 8.45 game. Is it hard to get going at 8.45 in the morning? I mean, you probably had practices, but to play a game at 8.45 in the morning, is it hard? Um, it, it is hard because your body's not all the way up as far as working, you know, in, in full motion. So getting up early is a, a struggle. So I have to get up and, you know, we came out here and got a W, so that was good. Does your pregame um, routine change at all with the early start? Um, no, we just do the same thing, actually, just uh, two hours early, actually. <laughs> All right, so you guys came out. The first half was kind of tied for, for most of it, went back and forth in terms of leads. Then you guys jumped out. What was the adjustment that you guys made to, to jump out to that 11-point lead at halftime and really just and stick with that the entire game? Um, I think we, we executed uh, a lot better coming out the half. Um, we got to the free throw line um, early, so we got in the bonus, actually. So that was, that was a good start for the second half, and we were in the bonus for the rest of the game, so that was good. There were a lot of fouls called on the offensive side, the defensive side. How do you switch up your defense when you know that the refs are going to be calling a lot of fouls? Um, it's, it's, it's really hard, really, because you still have to play defense and, you know, you still you, you try not to get a foul. So it goes either way, but uh, you just got to try your best, try your best to play defense. Keep playing. Now, you guys out-rebounded the Jaspers. You yourself added six rebounds. Is that something that you guys are really focused on and just attacking the ball, attacking the rim? Well, we focus on rebounding as a team, um, defensive rebound, offensive rebounds. You know, uh, I'm a guy that has to get back, so I can't rebound, but I will go get some rebounds. And I came through with a couple tonight, so that was this morning. That was good. <laughs> yeah. Um, you also had, you added 22 points to uh, the score as well. You know, just being a senior and – and having leadership on the team is it something that you look for to score or are you trying to pass the ball um kind of both you know i want to get my teammates in the game as well because i know i'm a scorer and teams focus on me so i have to get those guys involved as well but uh tonight was a night that i i, I had to contribute and well this morning i had to contribute <laughs> and we came out with a win so that was good now your next game is out on the road again down at florida state um, you also are on the road on Monday, like two days later in Illinois. How do you recover and rest on those on those travel days? Um, recovery, uh, getting in the training room, ice tub, a lot of ice. Uh, recovery is, is key when you're on games like this on the road and stuff like this. So we have to, you know, get in the ice tub and get with our trainer and get treatment as much as we can. Now, I know it's early on in the season. You guys are 2-0. and What are some of the things that you're going to be working on as a team to, to extend this winning streak and, and keep the winning way for the rest of the season? Um, rebounding. Um, rebounding and defense. You know, uh, those are two main keys that we mainly focus on, and offense is going to come throughout the floor of the game. So rebounding and defense is where we're really focusing on. The Eagles improved to 2-0 and on the season, and they are back out on the road against the Florida State Seminoles on Friday. As for the Jaspers, they are still searching for their first win, and they will play host to Hofstra University on Friday night. From Dratty Gymnasium at Manhattan College on this Tuesday morning, I'm Lauren Fodi for a lot of sports talk.